Hello everyone, I am the Master Science Emperor here today and welcome to another hammer tutorial. I know I haven't done one in a while and I hope to not spend too much time on this tutorial today. And what I'm going to be demonstrating is how you can use an entity type called a Funk Move Linear to create essentially an elevator that goes from point A to point B. Now what I might do is just overlay gameplay as to why I am not using a Funk Track Train and Path Tracks because it always seems to me that the elevator seems to go either too high or too low from where you want it to go to and it could be that I've set the velocity type to ease in and ease out so it doesn't quite get to the path tracks properly so instead what I'm going to do is use a funk move linear which pretty much works if you have two stops and you might need some complicated entity manipulation using inputs and outputs if you want to have multiple stops so what I'm going to do is demonstrate how you can make it move from point A to point B and then a potential way of making it so you can it knows whether or not to open and close. So if we go ahead and do that now as you can see I've already uh, grouped my platform together so all we need to do is just uh, control T it to an entity and we're going to select a funk move linear and there we go. This thing is a funk brush so I'll just set that now that's going to be parented to the train and that is a funk button so that's going to be able to activate the elevator so this is our funk move linear let's call it something like uh, combine elevator why not uh, as you can see we've got parent in case you want to parent it to anything the origin where it's at when the modes and all that disable receiving shadows if you want to make sure shadows don't activate on it Move direction, because this is essentially our closed position, we are going to tell it to go upwards. Its starting position is between 0 and 1. Now essentially what we have right now is that our move distance is set to 100, but that's not going to be the case. So essentially what it's saying is that it's a decimal number between 0 and 1, and where do we want our elevator to start between our move distance? And essentially we want, we want it to start at the very bottom so you can leave that at zero but if you want to manipulate it then you can do. I'll just change the speed to 200. Now I'm going to calculate the move distance for you right now. What you want to do is you select your brush. That's a bit too large. Okay, let's select our brush. Then go all the way up to the top. Select the other brush. And then go OK. Well we know that this brush is that at the very top. And we go down and it's telling us it's 1156 however that is in count that's counting for a thickness of 4 in the elevator so we have to subtract that 4 from 1156 to get 1152 so that is the amount that we want to move and that's what you can do do for that so you essentially move from this flush position in the floor all the way up for the elevator shaft and it will move flush into this gap here. So that's kind of the intended effect. Blocking damage, in case the player tries to block it then you can kill the player, I'll say 500. And unfortunately there's no sound for when it moves, when the uh, train actually moves, so you have to sort of... Um, have a stop and stop effect only. So if I go into the war sounds, I believe there are two sounds which I like for something like this, which is plat, uh, skylift move and skylift stop. So, okay, it wasn't the sound effects I was thinking it was, but um, there you go. I've uh, gone the flags. It says not solid, but I think it's only non-solid to the player not to actual physics objects or anything else. There's every possibility those audio effects you just heard played through the microphone and caused some level of feedback, so I apologize for that. So it's uh, professionalism right there. So what we want to do is go under the brush and parent it to the combine elevator. We want to take the button and parent it to the combine elevator so the these objects move with this elevator when it moves. Okay, so what we're going to do now is look into the entities if you will if the input and output manipulation now what one thing we can do is set speed so we can change the speed of the elevator in motion through you know a trigger for instance and we can set the position now i'm pretty sure 
that set position is between 0 and 1 so it doesn't seem like in my mind you'll be able to have multiple stops and sort of you know cause it to go from one to another if that makes sense you'll have to just basically use triggers and all that sort of stuff to really just cause it to stop but um yeah it's kind of tricky to do but either way if we save this and test then what we should be able to see right now is that we can activate the platform it goes upwards it gets to the top and then, oh wait, we haven't even triggered a way to do it. Oops, just, just jumping too far ahead. Sorry, we have to add an on start touch, or on pressed, sorry, and select the combine elevator and then open it because it's like a door. And one thing we can do as well is we can use a command called exclamation mark self. So we don't actually need to give a name to the combine button essentially so we're just telling the uh, button to lock itself so we don't use it again now of course we do kind of need to give a name to the button because what I'm going to demonstrate now is what we can do if we have say access back down to this platform so you know we have to distinguish between going up and going down if that makes sense so Unfortunately, this method, I don't know how to necessarily work around it right now. If, say, you can get back down to this point and you want to call the elevator down, otherwise, as you'll see here, you'll just fall down and you fall into like this shaft and die essentially. So, essentially, what I want to have is we tell the game that we want to open the move linear when we're on this platform and then we go upwards. We tell the platform to close when we're up here. Right, so that's what I'm going to try and demonstrate right now and the way I'm going to go about doing this is to use a logic branch entity not a branch listener but just a regular branch entity and I'll move that there now I'm going to call it combine elevator branch you can call it whatever the hell you want to this is just example sake so as you can see you've got initial value of 0 and it's a boolean value so it's either 0 or 1 so for two stops you can essentially distinguish between false which is zero and true which is one so what we want to do is say on false we want the combine elevator to open and on true simultaneously we want the combine elevator to close okay so essentially what we'll have is if we push the button instead of activating the combine elevator what we'll go ahead and do is you know um, test the branch okay so if we test the branch it will say okay if we're here it's going to say zero so we're going to open the combine elevator and what we're going to do now is actually create triggers to say if we're up in this area we'll set the value of the uh, branch to one so it knows to close the elevator okay so let's go ahead and do that. What I'll do is select the trigger texture, which is right here. I'm going to encompass this entire upper area with the trigger texture. So if we go out, we can see that there's the trigger texture. If I control T that, we can create a trigger multiple. And essentially all we're gonna do is say on start touch. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set the value of the branch to 1 which means it's true when we're up here at least and when we activate the button again when we reach this area it's going to close the combine elevator and likewise if we go down here again if I just encompass the entire room with a trigger texture we can go control T trigger multiple and then on start touch combine elevator branch set value of zero so it's already set to zero but if we're in, in this area it sets it to zero and one thing I might actually go ahead and do is give this name give this a name finally of combine elevator button so instead of putting the exclamation mark self you can put uh, combine elevator button lock if you really want to and we're gonna go into the move linear outputs now and I'm gonna say on fully open we're going to have the combine elevator button to 
unlock and the same for on fully closed we're going to unlock the button when the move linear has reached its final destination so we don't actually go ahead and push the button during transit and that's kind of reason why we want to do that now there's one last thing for a situation like this is that this button here you can actually press from behind so you can actually push the button and the platform goes whoop, right into the shaft and you're sort of stuck down here so you can have a workaround for that by having a trigger where the platform is and say okay you have to be in the trigger to activate the button basically but I'm not going to demonstrate that I'm assuming you'll have an elevator which goes upwards and you need to be in the elevator to press it and you can't be outside the elevator to press it but essentially by doing that what you can do now is see that you can go up and down in the elevator and it pretty much works the elevator fits smoothly into the hole that it's supposed to be in and if you're on the upper level and the move linear closes you go down and if you're on the lower level you press the button and the move linear opens and you go up so it's pretty nice and it sort of is a workaround for using funk track trains and path tracks if you're dealing with elevators that have some level of lip to them and they don't go quite where you want them to and you have to just sort of mess around until you get something that looks right this is sort of like a simplistic workaround for it so I hope you found this tutorial helpful I will be um, putting gameplay over the top of what's been going on right now to show you what happens and I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time for another video whatever it is I decide to do so thank you for watching and uh, see you later